coach offensively. Um, wh where are you at so far through three games with this team? It feels like they're they're sharing it pretty well, uh, shooting it pretty well. Is there is there anything you're you know foot dialed in on on improving as you get into the second week? I think there's some real positive aspects to our offense. The the willingness to share the ball. You mentioned that we've seen that the entire summer and preseason. Uh, but to see it happen in some games with the lights on, people in the crowd, you know, that that was great to see. I expected to see that, but it was nice to see that. Um, you know, we have a ways to go offensively, not in, in trying to figure out who we are, but trying to be more consistent in who we are. I think the – like take transition offense, for example. I think when our transition offense – uh, there was some. There's so many possessions in the first three games where it was really good, and we had five guys doing their job. And then when there's a plenty of examples where you know one or two guys don't do their job, and it wasn't very good. So it's good to see that we were capable of carrying over things from practice and applying to the games, but it wasn't consistent enough. So I think that's a big aspect. Our offensive rebounding. Uh, there's been moments where it looks like it's it's great, and then there's been moments where it hasn't been. So I think is I. As I continue to, if I went into a deep dive here, which you know we're doing that as a staff, um, a lot of the stuff we're doing offensively has been good if we've all been engaged and focused on our job. But it hasn't been consistent, so we're working on more consistency right now. And then, you know, I like how we played three games in a short period of time. Now we get a week to kind of go back and adjust and add. And, and certainly there's some areas offensively we're doing that. You've got a lot on your plate, but – how much is said, if any, about last year's game over at MKU being as they're the next opponent? I think every game. The next game's always a big game. Uh, you guys know I've never gotten to the coach speak thing. Is try to be honest up here. I, you know, you play a local game. It's a it's a big deal, and I, you know, you play games in your area. It's, it's a it's a big deal. Every game's a big deal, but games in your area mean a little something because it's in your backyard. So. You know, I think our guys are aware of that, but we haven't had any kind of conversations or anything like that to this point. Obviously, we've seen some pretty big upsets early in the season, some unexpected games. What does it say about your guys and how you prepared them that they were able to win all three games and able to win rather convincingly? No, I, like from a like global perspective, pleased with you know finding the win column over the first three games there's no doubt about that but there's, we're not we're not to our standard of play yet um, we have a long way to go I don't think we're sitting here thinking we're the greatest basketball club in the world after those three games but yeah went, went into heck of a lot better than losing no doubt about that coach defense inside the paint seems to be an issue for the first three games how do you go about correcting that moving forward yeah I, well, I don't know if it was an issue for all three games all three times I'd I think that how we defend – I thought against UIC we had a real problem with defending the paint, and some of that was uh, we were a little too worried about guarding the three-point line, so much so that we neglected some of our rotational responsibilities around the basket. Um, you know, there's other moments and stretches during games, kind of like our offense, where I felt like we've defended the rim pretty well. And then there's moments that we're making errors. It just the same way you coach everything. you. You show film, you address it in practice, you teach it, you hold people accountable. But we'll continue to, to value the kind of defense we have around the rim, whether it's rotationally or not. Dan has done a really good job getting to the rim, but his conversion rate isn't where you probably would want it, if I had to guess. Is there anything specific, finishing stronger, two hands, anything you look at that you see there's like – we can improve if he improves this it's going to go up yeah like I think in the last game um against Eastern Washington <laughs> I mean I probably said it in the press conference after the game we just missed a lot of layups and some sometimes you know it, every layup's not created equal right I mean sometimes you can run in there and try to shoot a leap and leaner over a seven footer or, or kind of fade away from the rim at three or four feet those aren't high percentage shots like but angled layups where you're going towards the rim are really high percentage shots for college basketball players and we missed a boatload of those and Dan missed a boatload of those 
Um, Dan Skilling is a really good finisher. Davion Thomas, who missed a couple, is a really good finisher. And some others. I, I don't think I have a huge concern about that, but in practice today, we'll start practice with finishing drills, <laughs> if, if, if you want me to answer your question directly. But no, I don't have a huge concern because – I think that's always been a strength of Dan Skillings and Davion Thomas, and they miss, they're the ones that miss some of the, the bunnies, right? But, um, but no, we'll, we'll get back to the fundamentals this week in practice and finishing, catching the ball with two hands, shot fakes, ball fakes, you know, footwork. We'll get back to all that today. You mentioned how much better Chisholm would probably become January, and that's probably the case for a lot of your guys. But uh, are you impressed? The first two games have been you know, not too shabby there for – Freshman. Impressed? No, I see him every day, and I think he's got a chance to be a, not a good player, a great player. So, no, I ain't impressed. I'm not impressed yet. Uh, but uh, do I think that he's improving? That he's working on the things that he needs to do every day to continue to take steps? Yes. So, I think Jizzle's doing the things he needs to do. He has the right mindset and work ethic, but he has not impressed me on the basketball court yet, and that's a compliment to him because I think he he has so much uh, so much basketball or excellent basketball in front of him. You've talked about CMOS as a facilitator, and we've seen that with high assists, low turnover numbers. Uh, are you happy with that side of, of what he's done so far, and how close do you think he is to having one of those 20, 25-point games that you know he, he had at Butler regularly? Oh, he'll have. He'll have uh, big time shooting and scoring games. He'll have big time assist games. He'll have both games where he does both of those things. Um, I thought he really settled in here the last two games. And he's really working to improve defensively, which is an area I've really challenged him. Uh, so I, I appreciate how hard he's working. I still think he's got some steps there. You know, he's going to settle in. He's a really good player. Again, we, we see it every day. So if, if we if there's a half or a sequence where we don't see that type of thing during a game, we don't overreact because we see it every day. He's going to be fine. Um, we, everybody knows how important he is to this team's success. And I, I was pleased with some of the, the stretches that he had in the last two games. Um, you know, I, he's taking care of the ball well, but I, I think he can take care of it better. There's a couple plays where he puts the ball in jeopardy off the bounce, and he's a one of the best ball handlers on the team. So that's not like him. I think it's a little bit just, you know, knowing when to dribble and when to pass and when to shoot, and he's pretty good at that. Career day for Vic on uh, Sunday. How much does him being able to step out and hit the three change the dynamic of your offense? Yeah, shooting fives are difficult to cover in college basketball now, I mean, any level of basketball, really, because it, it forces you to uh, pull your biggest guys away from the rim. It forces you to adjust your pick and roll schemes. So, I mean, shooting fives present problems. And, you know, when we're playing him at that position, which we've been primarily doing here these, these last three games without Aziz and Jamil, um, it, it does open up some things for us offensively. I, I, I've been telling you guys he can really shoot the ball now. Well, he could shoot it a little bit last year. I just didn't let him. He can really shoot it, I think, trying to find the right balance of when he looks for his shots without just floating around the perimeter. I think that's the trick here, and I think we're working through that every day. Um, but, yes, at the five spot, it presents a ton of problems for other teams' pick-and-roll coverage or just spacing the floor. At the four spot, it's really important that he spaces the floor in that position. And so I think he's primed to do a good job at either position this year. You told me a lot coming into last season that John Newman was having as good, if not a better, lead-up to the season than anybody you had, and then he got – the knee is what we're seeing from him the last two games a, a even a glimpse at where he was at before the injury last year yes I mean that, the way you guys have seen him play it's what we saw all preseason not not just the defensive effort and intensity and impact because he did that his first year here just seeing that he's taking a step as an offensive player. I mean, you guys see the way he shoots the ball now or his decision-making, driving the basketball. It's significantly improved during the open court. Now he tried to go behind his back and transition the other day and turned it over. So, we, you know, listen, we're not there yet. But overall, it's, it's obvious that he's really improved as a player. We saw that the entire preseason last year. So when he went down, you know, that, that really did impact our team a year ago. But – like everything has a, 
a blessing in its own right, and we wouldn't have him right now. So it's you know it's, it's working out for our team right now. You've been pretty eloquent on uh, Aziz and Jamil. Any any form of an update? Any any talks with attorneys or the the state or anything? I have no updates. No, I have no updates, and I've been very very clear how disappointed I am and discouraged, and you know just. I guess the uh, you know it's 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 uh it's it's not it's been extremely hard on them but it's been extremely hard on our entire program and I guess my, my only comment today which is in line with all my other comments is I mean I I, I really believe that what what's happening here is that the NCAA is trying to make a statement to college basketball and college football and that you cannot transfer two times if you haven't graduated. I think that's what's happening here. Um, I have zero problem with that being a rule. I'd support that. My issue is the way that we're doing it. I'm all for finding some way to restrict transfers. I think that would help all of our jobs but not at all costs and not at the cost of our, our own players. <laughs> I mean, so like, it's like anything in life. If there's something that you guys think would be good and you say it would be good if we did that as a society or we, it'd be good if we put that law, that rule in as a law. Yeah, that, that's great. But at any cost, no, we don't, we don't, we don't operate like that. Like we don't do things at, at any cost. We do things the right way and the right way to been up, been out to come out last spring or last January and say there are no two-time transfers, zero. That would have been the right thing to do. And we all would hear that information and abide by it. But to put out a sheet of paper that says there's three types of waivers, there's seven guidelines for this particular waiver, and if you meet those, you better play. Kids meet them, coaches and programs do their jobs, (laughs) look into that to make sure that you know, that, that information's accurate, and then decisions are made. And so the mental health, the mental health of our student athletes that are sitting out, Jamil and Aziz, and the mental health of the other ones that are being pulled into this, and the mental health of our program is being sacrificed times 10 because of a, a poor process and confusion and arbitrary thinking and um, hidden agendas and things like that. So that's my issue that's my issue like let's have clarity I I think everybody does well with clarity Uh, and then we can debate the real issue at hand but we're not even able to debate the real issue at hand because and I really I don't know but I really believe that's what's happening we're using these kids as examples frontline examples so the next group won't try this and that is wrong like that's inherently wrong and I'll keep saying it like wait this is what's going on is just not fair to young people it's not the sexiest story, so you don't hear it all over the national media. It's not. It's not. It's not. It, it doesn't get headlines. But the fact of the matter is, there's human beings in that locker room that are being sacrificed, and it's not okay. And I'm. Just, I will not get over it. I will not get past it. We will. We will continue to make sure that we do everything in our power to get these guys on the court, because that's where they belong, and it's unhealthy. For them not to be playing that that is the truth that is the facts got time for one more kind of from a tangible aspect how hard is it for you or anyone on your staff to completely clear your mind of that situation and prepare to coach a game or does it just kind of naturally linger into the game for you no our, our jobs are to control what we can control you know so when 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 i'm as a staff we're going to pour our heart into those guys that can play, you know, and that's important that our, our team understands that, that we can, there's going to be other things that are issues out of our control over the course of this season, over the course of our lives. We we have to lock in and control we can control, but every time we're not on that basketball court or we're not practicing or we're not in the game, that this, this has become a distraction for our team. Uh, quite frankly, because to, to act like it's not would be to neglect the injustice here. I mean, and we're not going to do that. We're not going to just go, oh, okay, well, man, we're, we're sacrificing two kids' lives. Like, they're, 
their entire identity and their entire life over dynamics that are well above what's ever going on here. And we're not going to just say that's okay, we're moving on. We're not doing that. And maybe that makes it easier to coach him every single day. But we're not doing that because that would be the wrong thing to do. We're not going to just say it's okay. It's, it's not okay. We will stand up for it. Like, I'll, I'll say that. Like, we will stand up for these two guys, and our team will stand up for these two guys. So, yes, is that a distraction in some ways? Absolutely. But when we take the floor, it's not an excuse. All right? When we're in practice, it's not an excuse. We'll, we'll control what we can control.